Let's take a look at a flower fan light. 30 watt ceiling fan with light and it's dimbo, color temperature controlled and it's got a fan built in. And the reason I'm featuring this is because during our hot summer, the BBC and other organizations decided to run a little hate campaign against these. They're very common in other countries, less so in the UK. And their concern was that uh, they're very heavy, so they could strain the wiring. They've obviously never lifted a Tiffany uh, stained glass light shade because they are a concerning thing. But their other concern was that because they twist in operation, they're going to screw up all your wiring and then it's going to burst into flames and kill everybody. That was basically the gist of what they were saying. Anyway, before we start, we have to assemble this. We have to plug the fins in. Then I'll show you it working. Now, which way up do these go? It goes up this way. So I shall plug these in, trying not to snap them in the process. They'll probably be loud clicks. Oh, that does feel terrible, putting it in like that. Maybe it goes up the other way. Maybe I should read the instructions. I th would think the nice shiny blades go down the way. There it goes. It does go in that way. Oh, I'll just smack everything in the vicinity with this. Uh, really, I'd be better putting this into the ceiling first and then plug it in because, uh, or just dangling it because uh, it's quite fumbly. Once you've got these blades in, there's not much room. I'll tell you what, I'll put the other blades in, because otherwise I'm going to end up up here. And I'll plug it into the light fitting and we'll take a look at the modes. And then we'll take it apart, because that's what we're here for. So I'll go and give you a demonstration of that right now. So the fan is now installed. It's not dangling from a cable, though it's straight into a uh, ceiling socket. And we've got the remote control here. We can choose between the cold colour temperature that initially lights up, a warmer one, and this is actually a bit too warm looking on camera. It's not as orange as it looks. This is what you'd call typical warm room light, but it's a bit over rich. Um, so the next thing we can do, let's put it to a neutral white since it looks more acceptable. And then we've got the fan button with three speed settings. And it moves a fairly decent amount of air. faster and fastest but you can vary uh, the fan speed you can also turn just the fan on and off with this button here um, you can change the color temperature of the light uh, manually just by making it warmer or colder and it'll slide through them you've got a moonlight function which just basically goes into sort of nighttime mode um, and then you've got a dimmer which lets you dim the light down to your desired setting just across a range. Okay, now you've seen it running. Let's take it apart. Okay, now you've seen it in action. Let's explore. I kind of want to get this dome off. I, do, I think this might be quite destructive. The thing I really didn't like about that news article was that uh, this electrician had apparently... Uh, been told by some friends that they visited an elderly lady and uh, they were worried about the fact that she'd put a ceiling fan in herself, just screwing it into the lamp holder, and it was making a sort of knocking noise. Not sure what the knocking noise was, but apparently he went over and immediately removed it for the old lady, telling her how dangerous it was, and then quoted for installing a ceiling fan. You think, well, isn't that just drumming up business? Hmm. Anyway, let's see if we can get this off. Well, that's quite interesting construction. A uh, standard thread size of the look of it. There's the two colours of LEDs that are faded between two, give you your different colour temperatures. Right, let's uh, take some screws out this end. There is increasing competition between electricians for domestic work because a bit of a protection racket has been created by a marketing company. You may have heard of the NICEIC, the National Inspection Council for Electrical Installation Contractors, and it sounds like it's a government body, but it's really just a marketing company. I'm not impressed by them at all. I think they've done a lot of damage to the electrical industry. So this has a little connector in here. This is fairly common amongst these type lights. It means they can manufacture these base units and then they can uh, use a uh, a uh, little connector like this to choose between which uh, cap is going to go onto it. The spacing between the connections, you might think, is that not a bit close? I don't think it's really an issue because you find uh, many circuit boards that go on have very close spacing of connections as well, particularly the components on the board. 
Right. So what do we have here? The circuit board can be removed. There is a little three pin connector here. I'm going to put a red dot in that to show it was the one with the red. Although I should be able to work this out. <laughs> I am, uh, wonder if that's three phase motor driver here, perhaps made from discrete H bridges or something. And then there's this, mm, or is that the LED? I'm not really sure. Uh, let's take this out. Here is a screw. Poke that capacitor out the way. And we shall lift this circuit board out. So this is going into the motor, the one with the red dots. That is next to these little drivers. And the other connector is going straight down through the central core to the light. It would be interesting seeing what's in here. I don't know how destructive this is going to be. Well, let's take these screws out and find out. And then we'll take a closer look at the circuit board, which looks fairly complicated. That means that either I'll do a full reverse engineering if I can get in the mood for everything, uh, or I might just do a partial, a block diagram of the modules, which is kind of easier to digest, so to speak. So taking this off, what's this going to reveal? Uh, nothing much. Oh no, it has. It's revealed. It's revealed the motor. There we go. And it is a fairly typical multi-phase motor, but by the look of it, there's no feedback. So it is just effectively a low voltage three-phase motor here that uh, is just relying on uh, well, a synchronous motor effectively. Um, it's worth mentioning that this thing doesn't just suddenly ramp up to high speed. It does slowly ramp up. And then when you turn it off, it slowly ramps down again. Right, first thing. First, this big capacitor here looks quite spicy. Let's bridge that, just in case it holds a charge. Does it hold a charge? Did I even make a good connection there? Let's give it the finger test. Yes, that's it, discharge now. Okay, right, I shall fold that up to get a better picture, and we'll take a closer look at this. One moment, please. Since this is quite a lot of circuitry and the video would take a very long time to explain everything, I'm going to do two versions. This is the short version for those who don't have the patience or the interest to know a lot more about the circuitry. So here's a brief summary. The main supply comes in, there's a fusible resistor down here, and then I've removed it for this picture. There is a large capacitor here, 22 megfarad 4 and volt, and the bridge rectifier converts the AC to DC, charges that capacitor up, and it powers almost everything else. There's also a couple of resistors that signal over to the processor when from the AC side. And it turns out that if you turn the switch on and off, you can actually put the fan through uh, various modes without needing the remote. You can turn the fan on, off, light on, off, etc. just by toggling the switch on and off. The unit also generates a 22 volt supply with this little switch mode chip, a transformer and this capacitor here. But it's Negative is referenced to the same negative as the main supply, uh, just so that everything is uniform, operating in a common zero volt rail. That 22 volt supply feeds the H bridge drivers, and the microcontroller also gets that 22 volt supply, which is ludicrous. It's an Arma Cortex microcontroller, M0 series. And one that I couldn't find documentation on, but it's got dedicated output for driving uh, triple MOSFETs, so it's presumably designed to drive motors directly and uh, via the MOSFETs. Um, it also, though, generates its own 5-volt supply, which is used to feed the infrared sensor, and that also, uh, the 5-volt supplies the circuitry in here. Um, the... Unit controls the fan directly by switching those, but it also controls the intensity of the two channels via these bright power chips, each with its own inductor. They're basically a buck regulator, and uh, they then drive the output of the LEDs with the pulse, mod pulse width modulation signal that enables them and toggles them on and off at very high frequency. And that's what's inside that. So, I mean, it's actually really complex. It looks a fairly straightforward product. I'm just looking for that thing now. There is. It looks like a humble fan, but it actually embodies quite a lot of complex circuitry and quite a considerable little microcontroller just virtually designed for applications like this. It's very impressive.